Hi there. Um, some of you may have uh, seen on Facebook that uh, at the weekend I took the Elements uh, filter um, and I put it, uh, I designed it into a, a 5U module from my Mark 1 system. Um, this is just something that I wanted to do. It's a, just a personal little experiment. Um, but I thought it was worth doing to complement the other filters A and B. A being a, a, a transistor ladder model, uh, the B filter being a um, state variable filter. And now we have what I have called, with a little sticker uh, on here, filter D. Uh, this is uh, the diode ladder filter. It's got three pole responses. Um, it sounds lovely and squishy and um, very squelchy. Uh, we can take a, a closer look at this um, just to give you an idea of what it sounds like. But uh, interesting for me to see it outside of the synth and put into a nice module. Um, here is the, uh, the Mark I uh, Filter D module. Um, common to the size of the 5U Mark I modules that I do, uh, it's a two-space wide job. Um, I don't do a single space, it's always two-space, but the type of uh, controls that I put on it, uh, they are not small, um, but they are not uh, too big. Um, this allows for three rows of control on a typical uh, Macbeth Mark I module. Um, typically as well, we'll have a 10 socket output on, on them. This uh, goes through the oscillators, filters and the other stuff that I do. Anyway, um, the controls that we have, um, we have a, a frequency, uh, cutoff frequency knob here. We have resonance here. Uh, we have the response here which is labelled one pole, very chintzy and I don't know how to describe it, it's a, it's a thin but bold sound. We have the two pole, uh, which I'm finding to be extremely acidic, um, and we have the four pole, which is a very uh, powerful sounding uh, response. The interesting thing with this module, um, it's made up from uh, discrete uh, transistors uh, and there are some uh, transistor arrays in there but um, apart from a couple of uh, operational amplifiers in the thing it is uh, a lovely discrete circuit. So special to this one um, actually I'll get there in a sec. What we have here we have uh, buffered keyboard tracking um, one volt per octave and it's uh, at maximum it's one volt per octave at zero there's nothing there. Um, when this filter is oscillating and you have the tracking on full chromatically it plays just like uh, a one volt per octave CV sine wave oscillator. It's fabulous. Um, Below, uh, so we have the tracking there, we have a uh, log CV input 1, a log CV input 2. Um, so you can have your keyboard tracking it, you can maybe have an LI4 or some other device like what I'm going to show you here, uh, controlling the cutoff uh, uh, frequency. We've got a small mixer here, three audio inputs, um, so they are what they say on the tin. Uh, this is for putting your audio in. Now, because of the PCB mounting jack sockets that I use here, I thought it'd be neat actually to normalize a noise generator with a white and a pink uh, output. The white output is normalized into audio input 3. And in fact, I wonder, I've got a... Whoa! <laughs> so there we are. Built-in uh, white noise. Two-pole response. Lovely. 
four cold response. Two cold response. And the one cold response. Let's turn that down. I, um, <laughs> I uh, included um, a pink noise generator in the CV input. So it does that sort of thing. It's maybe a bit loud. Let's turn these guys down and I'll just bring that down again. So yeah, you got uh, a tracking input there um, and CV1 input, CV2 input and your three audio inputs in here has to be said. Let's say you had the noise generator on that turned up. Insert a jack it then gets disabled and it's your sound that goes in. Each pole, as we call it, uh, has its own uh, output. And there's what I call an all output. And the all output goes to the, the response switch. Now, interestingly, with the way I design things, um, the module itself is quite thin. Um, so if there were 5U skiff uh, cases or things like that, it'd be perfect for it. This is the maximum width, looks to me like it's about 40 millimeter in depth. Um, we've got uh, uh, .com, synthesizers.com style power uh, connector there. Um, and these are little calibration pots for uh, the keyboard tracking, what's known uh, as DC balance uh, and there's the range, the, the, the range of the, the filter uh, which tunes the cutoff here. So um, <coughs> hopefully you've uh, managed to get a good-ish look at this thing. Um, let's kind of play around with it uh, and we'll concentrate on the objects that uh, I've got on the table here which includes a function generator uh, the Element Synth keyboard and the filter. So here we have uh, the Element Synth, as I say, this keyboard. Now, <coughs> I've got a, a quantity of these keyboards that have come in. They're traditional uh, synthesizer key actions, if you want to put it that way, uh, from uh, the late 70s. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing things with this guy. Um, I like to play the elements with the the touch keyboards, but I also like to play it in conjunction with a real keyboard. If you have MIDI, this can be switched to MIDI, so you can play your MIDI keyboard and the touch keyboard with it. It's great for transpose, you know, you play on here and you can change your pitch here, or even vice versa. Back to this stuff. Yeah, I've got a function generator here. I think of these things as uh, complex, low frequency, Oscillators, if you need them, they also go into the audio range as well. Great for cross modding. This is uh, the Elements uh, power supply, um, and it's got three uh, outputs. One is driving this keyboard, one's driving the Elements, and here we see this uh, clodged on connector which is going to the, the filter module. So what I've got is a filter wide open because we're using the elements as a, the oscillators as the sound source. I got the tape delay off, spring reverb off, the volume's up, and the filter is wide open, no resonance. So effectively, we're going to hear the oscillators coming out of the machine into here, which is what we want. So let's see where we're at just now. We will open this up. <laughs> It's uh, almost oscillating. It does all that groovy stuff. Um, we've got no tracking on the filter. I'm just manually controlling the cutoff frequency. Okay, bring this down. 
So we're just on the the knee of uh, just before self oscillation with a filter, and I like to add a little bit of glide. That's the uh, four pole response. Here's the two pole. And here's the one pole response. Has the more slightly fizzy, fizzy sound. That's it. Now, if I take the function generator here, I've got it set to a, a triangular waveform and I've got it plugged into control input 1. Following the elements, we can send out the modulation oscillator as well as the CV. So let's take some out. Let's get some sample and hold. We've got still got a bit of light on. It's quite nice. oscillators out and make this thing oscillate itself loud and we've got the tracking on so so it's totally chromatic and if I were to take Let's take the triangle out of this. Let's see what it does. It's pure sound wave. It kicks 
this in about there. Let's bring Aussies up again. That was my weekend experiment, the Mark I uh, Filter D. Um, my plan is to, uh, once I have the elements uh, work done and everyone's got their stuff, I'm going to be doing not just the Filter D, but there's going to be some other modules that I want to add to that system. I personally uh, love 5U, it's just the right size. You can make an amazing synthesizer from this stuff. Um, and there are quite a few companies out there making some seriously excellent 5U. Um, so you could, just like the Eurorack stuff, mix and match some amazing things. Right, uh, that's that. Thank you for watching.